Hi y'all, I'm Kayla with Live Oak Nest. Welcome back to my home. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to take this thrifted urn that I picked up from the thrift store. You can see it's got a lot of old dusty greenery, um, a faux plant arrangement. And so I'm going to take this and transform it into a DIY pumpkin topiary for the fall season. So the first thing I wanna do is take out this this fake plant so it's just stuffed in there with some floral foam so I'm gonna take all of that out clean it really well with Amy Howard's clean slate and then I'm gonna show you um, how I'm gonna paint it okay so for our first step I'm gonna use this Amy Howard one step paint and it is in the color ball house buff it's a creamy white um, so this I'm gonna put two coats of paint on this and then I'll show you the next step So once your urn is good and dry, you're ready to add your cracked patina. So that is going to give this urn a nice crackled, just chippy patinaed look to it. And I love this project and this product. Um, I think you'll really love it too. So I am going to take a little bit of this cracked patina, pour it into a plastic cup, and then add just a little bit of warm water to thin it down. It is quite thick, and so you do wanna thin it down just a little bit. And then you're just going to apply a thin, even coat to your urn. So you do wanna try and avoid any puddles or drips, and you kind of have to watch it as you're doing these urns, just they kind of had to have a tendency to puddle up. Um, so just do your best, work your way around, and just smooth those puddles or drips out as you go. And I typically, after I'm done, will check it in about 10 to 15 minutes and see if I have any major drips or puddles, and then I'll just smooth those out. So this goes fairly quickly. It is kind of a caramel color, and it will dry that color, and it also dries very glossy. But then you're gonna go back with another coat of one step paint and you'll lose that shine so it'll be a nice matte finish when you're completely done so you do want to let this dry really really well when you touch it there shouldn't be any tack to it it takes about an hour to dry uh, maybe longer just kind of depending on the weather and the humidity um, in your home so a couple of the urns that I painted I let them sit overnight and it also depends on how thick you apply the cracked patina but again, you just want it to be really good and dry before you head on to that next step. And there shouldn't be any tack or stickiness to it when it's dry. Okay, so you can see here, this is completely dry and it did end up running a little bit. I put on another coat um, just in a few places that I didn't feel like were thick enough. And you can see I left it alone and went to bed. <laughs> so it did puddle a little bit in a few areas, but I think it will be just fine. So for my second coat, I'm mixing the Selznick Gray with the Ball House Buff. I just decided the, the uh, Selznick Gray was a little too dark for me. Um, so I decided to mix it with a little bit of the Ball House Buff to make it a little lighter. So originally I planned to finish it with this coat, but then after I did that, I didn't quite like how it looked. I wanted it lighter with a little bit more dimension and texture and so I ended up adding another coat so had I known I was going to do that I would have just gone in with just the Selznick gray you don't necessarily need to lighten it up for this step so a couple of pointers when you're working on this step of the process you want to work pretty quickly and you only have about really two passes with your paintbrush before you need to move on to another section because it will start crackling um, very very soon and if it's already started crackling and started drying a little bit and you rub your wet brush back over that area it'll just pull that paint right up so just work quickly dab it in um, you can tell I'm not really painting it on I'm just stippling it all over the pot because I'm trying to work quickly and I'm just trying to get it covered really well so if you're working on a larger urn or a larger piece you want to make sure you're working in sections so just 
put your second coat of paint on in a section, then pull back with your hand or a paintbrush um, to distress it before you move on to painting another section because it dries really quick and you want to be able to pull back the paint that you want to pull when it's still damp or when it's still a slightly wet you don't want it to dry completely or it'll just be crackled and you won't won't be able to pull back any of that paint so this urn here is pretty small so I'm just going to rush through it get my paint all on there and then I'll go back and pull um, just a little bit of that paint up before I head on to my next layer Okay, so you can already start seeing the crackles. I mean, they start happening within like 20 to 30 seconds. So I'm gonna slow it down so you can really get, get a good close up look at what it starts to look like. So in the areas that I've applied um, a thicker amount of paint, it's still a little wet. And so I'm gonna go back, especially on that bottom part here. So I'm gonna go back in and just use my hand to kind of slightly pull up some of the paint. And I'm just kind of doing this randomly. I don't want to do too much. I want it to look like it's happened naturally over time. And so I'm just going to sparingly use my hand to pull up some of that paint. And you'll kind of see the process and how, um, how I'm doing this. But again, I am going to add another layer of the cracked patina and then a final coat of the Ball House buff to finish it off. But you can see just how easy this paint lifts up and especially when it's still really wet. So you can do as much or as little um, texturing by pulling up paint that you want. It just kind of depends on the look that you're going for. So you can also use a clean, dry chip brush to help you pull up some of the paint. And I've tried that. I just found that I prefer using my hands. I feel like I have a little bit better control over um, the outcome. And so I just prefer to do that, but you're welcome to try and use a dry, clean chip brush. It does help in some instances if you're trying to get like inside some deep crevices, then the dry brush um, is really helpful. So I'm just going to continue working my way around and pulling up paint um, in the areas that I want it pulled. Here is a close-up look at this step of the process and how it looks. I'm going to slow it down for you so you can really kind of see. So you can see the base coat, you can see the crackle texture. It looks so good and you can see all of the areas where I've pulled up some of that um, Selznick gray paint. So you could completely stop here. I decided that I wanted a lighter top coat and a little bit more um, texture and dimension because I want these urns to look like they are very old like iron urns that have been you know painted and weathered outside so I'm gonna add one more layer to this so to do that you're going to let this dry completely so I would let it dry overnight just because um, that's what I like to do but you could definitely wait until it's dry to the touch which shouldn't take too long probably an hour or so um, but I'm going to add another coat of the cracked patina and again I'm doing it the same way I did before so you just add a little bit of warm water mix it well together and then apply a thin even coat all over the urn and then I'm going to go back with my final coat of one step paint. So this is what it looks like when it's completely dry and I had both of those additional coats added on. And now I want to show you a couple of different ways to style it um, to make it into a pumpkin topiary. I ended up putting a little bit of this um, light antique wax on to seal everything in. And I wanted to show you a couple of options. So I just did one that's a little, that's similar size. Um, and I'll pop a video or a photo up here so you can see what it actually looks like. But I wanted to show you how you can make it, you know, you can spend a little more time and make a fuller looking, um, 
little pumpkin topiary or you can do something super simple and just, you know, stack on a candle wreath and then, you know, just set a pumpkin on top of it like that. So it doesn't have to be complicated. You could do something super simple um, or you can do something like that. Okay, so what I decided to do for this one, I'm going to take this grapevine wreath and I just kind of took out the little, um, the grapevine thing that was wrapped around it to keep it into a wreath shape. I just clipped it off and then I'm just going to kind of spread this out and push it down around the bottom of the topiary. And I love this. I just think it adds a good amount of texture and a little bit of darker color. And then I'm going to take some of this um, moss right here. It's kind of like straw. It's called moss. You can get it at Hobby Lobby or any craft store really, but I love this. I decorate with it a lot, especially in the fall and the um, spring. And so I'm gonna kind of just lay this over it and then I'm gonna add in a few stems. So I picked up some white berries and a couple of maple leaves from Hobby Lobby. And so I'm gonna use those to kind of add to this topiary and kind of finish it off. So once that was done, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of ribbon to the topiary. So you could tie this around the base, so on the actual urn. I decided to tie it around the pumpkin stem, and I thought that looked really cute. This, um, this checkered brown ribbon is really cute, and I got that off Amazon. And I'll also put a link to the video that I just put together on how to paint pretty painted faux pumpkins. So this pumpkin here came from Michael's. It was very pretty, but it was orange and red. And so I wanted to make it kind of go better with my fall decor this year. So I painted it this beautiful sage color. So I'll link that video so you can go check it out if you're wanting to paint some pumpkins. But I love how this little pumpkin topiary turned out. It is just too dang cute. I started collecting several of these urns. I was looking on Facebook Marketplace and when I would go to thrift stores because I wanted to be able to have a collection of them and use them throughout the different seasons. So you could use them in the spring for bird nest or in um, the winter for Christmas trees. There are just so many ways you can use them. Here is how I have it styled for the fall season. It's in my living room and it's on this little accent table, but I just think it turned out so pretty and I absolutely love it and I hope you loved it too. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments below or you can email me directly at Kayla at liveoaknest.com. If you're new to my channel, I would love to invite you to subscribe. I share French cottage inspiration for all things home decor and DIYs. So thank you again so much for watching today's video and I will see you again soon. Y'all take care.